and welcome to the very first of the Better Happy for Manager podcast episodes hosted by myself, Mike Jones. So who are we making this podcast for and why are we making it? So as the name might suggest, we're making this podcast for managers, but we're also making the podcast for people in a leadership position or business owners, because really, if you're a business owner or leader, you, you, you're a manager of sorts. So anybody that finds themselves in a leadership or management position, this podcast is being designed for you. Why? Specifically to help you thrive in that position and to help you get over and deal with many of the modern challenges that are becoming more pronounced in the in those roles in this modern world. So what we're seeing at the moment is due to the time in which we're all alive and the way in which the world works now is that there's a really high level of burnout, there's really high levels of stress, there's really high levels of poor physical and mental health for people in leadership and management positions. So we see that these numbers go up for managers, for leaders, and for business owners. And this is a problem because our leaders, our managers, our entrepreneurially minded people are the ones that can affect great change in the world, affect great change in businesses, make businesses better, make the world a better place. But that's not gonna happen if all of our managers and our leaders and our business owners are getting stressed and burnt out and struggling with their health. So by addressing that issue and helping you, we're helping you of course, but we're also helping businesses, we're helping the economy, we're helping the world be a better place. We need our leaders, we need our managers to thrive. We can't deal with having all of our leaders and managers getting burnt out, stressed out, and struggling with poor health. And one thing that I really wanna help people overcome is this belief that you can't do one without the other. You can't be a good leader or a good manager or a business owner without sacrificing your health, without, without working so hard that you struggle with your mental health. I wanna break down that belief. I wanna break down that false notion because it's damaging we can absolutely excel in our management roles we can absolutely excel in our leadership roles and we can absolutely excel as business owners and enjoy our our, our physical and mental health and personal lives as well so the podcast and everything we do at better happy is designed to help you realize that and bring that into fulfillment so in this very well let me just go over very quickly how the podcast is going to be formatted. So I'll be producing an episode on a weekly basis and my aim is to keep each episode below 30 minutes so that you can listen to this on a weekly basis whilst you're on your commute to work because that's a typical commute time. Just think about it like this. If you take one golden nugget from every single one of these episodes on a weekly basis and you listen to 50 a year or 40 a year and you implement those little things that you take away, How much better is your life going to be as an individual? How much better is your life going to be as a professional? How much more effective are you going to be as a person by implementing all of those nuggets? And the answer is is a lot more. So I'm going to be sharing with you information that I've gained from my own personal experience, which I'll share with you briefly today, from working with hundreds of managers and thousands of employees. Um, I'm going to be sharing with you the common problems which I think you will resonate with because actually we think that these problems that we deal with, whether it be stress, whether it not be looking after ourselves, whether it be dealing with a difficult team member, we think that it's just us that deals with these problems. But the truth is they're common problems that people deal with across the board. And by hearing that other people have those problems and then listening to some uh, solutions that have worked for others, that has a really positive impact on our mental health because we realize that, okay, it's not just me that struggles with this and there's a solution and I can implement that solution. So it helps us realize that these problems aren't as big as we might make them out to be and that there's something we can do about them that other people have benefited from. So that's what we'll be sharing with you once a month as well. So on the fourth episode, roughly, I'll also be bringing in a guest uh, that's a subject matter expert or got an inspiring story. Uh, Again, designed to, or that episode will be designed to give you maximum value and insight to help you improve uh, your, your life. So what's the key things that we're gonna be talking about during the podcast? We follow something called the HELPS method. And the HELPS method is something that I've designed from working with tons of leaders, tons of managers, tons of business owners and seeing the same problems over and over again. So we're all humans, we're all unique. All of our businesses are unique. All of our teams are unique. All of our roles are unique. But actually the fact that we're all human shows us that there's some commonalities across all of us. And when we really draw down into it, there's more commonalities than there is differences. And we 
or I, from seeing these same problems and seeing people struggle over and over again, recognized that I was kind of having the same conversations with people. I was having the same conversations with teams. I was having the same conversations with business owners. I was having the same conversations with CEOs and the heads of departments. So I started to draw across what the commonalities were and create a solution to actually address those common areas. And the methodology that we came up with is something called the HELPS methodology. So health, and it's it's a um, it's an acronym. So uh, H stands for help, health. So we need to talk about physical and mental health. You can't thrive in any role without having those two things. The E stands for engagement. So are you engaged at work? Does your work fulfill you? Do you enjoy being there? But also, are you able to help your teams be engaged? And it's actually way more simple than it might seem. Leadership. So are we looking after ourselves and our roles? Are we having a healthy relationship with confrontation? Are we addressing issues? Are we making, are we being decisive or are we holding back on those things? So leadership is a skill that we need to develop in order to be happy and, and fulfilled in our lives. Performance, are we able to grow as individuals, to grow as professionals, to grow our businesses, to grow our teams, um, to get results? without, and this is the important piece, without sacrificing our work-life balance and risking burnout. So this is probably one of the biggest issues for leaders, managers, and um, business owners. Getting results without burnout. We're very capable of getting results because we're all hard workers, but doing that without getting burnout is not as easy. And that's essential because you're of no use to anybody if you get really good results for a year, two years, three years, four years, five years, and then burn yourself out. It's a short-term solution. So we need to make sure that you're able to get those results without the burnout. So that's something that we'll cover and I'll go through my own experience of that. And then finally, strategy. So in a work context, do we are we able to plan long-term? Are we able to utilize the story of our team or of our life to inspire others and to, and to create clear goals um, and utilize that to keep ourselves on track and make sure that we're focusing on the right stuff? So when we address those five things, health, engagement, leadership, performance, and strategy, we are getting great results. We're feeling the best version of ourselves. We've got good work-life balance, and we are motivated and engaged by the work that we're doing because it's linked to a big picture, and we aren't having that huge risk of burnout or losing our passion. And really, when we tick those five boxes and we, and, and, and we address those areas, life's pretty good. So it helps the complex challenge of trying to get results, be aligned to our passions, do a good job, be healthy, have a work-life balance. It helps that complex issue feel a lot more manageable and attainable. And we've got some tools that I can share with you and I will be sharing with you to, to help you with that as well, free tools. So in today's podcast, obviously I've just given you an overview of what we're going to cover there. And it would be really fantastic if for you, our listeners, if you share questions and insights onto the episode. So share with me what you what you find useful what you don't find useful but but more importantly what you would like to hear and we'll create content but specifically designed around the issues that you're trying to overcome the things that you're stuck on or the things that you'd like to get better on so please do share with me in uh, comments and uh, via social media what you'd like to see and how you're finding the episodes because everything I do at Bear Happy that I do with teams and businesses has actually only become as effective as it is by listening to people and then creating solutions to those problems. So it's not about me being this all-knowing wise guru because I'm not. It's about me listening to what the challenges are and then working with others such as yourselves to come up with solutions. I really think that's what life's about, like understanding problems together and then coming up with solutions. So the theme for today then on episode one is understanding that we live in a new time, we live in a new environment. And when we understand that environment and the challenges and opportunities that environment brings to us, then we can really start to set ourselves up for success. But if we're passive and we don't take time to understand the environment that we live in now and the times that we live in, and we just kind of go with the flow and get frustrated with the challenges, we're not putting ourselves in a position to thrive. We're kind of not putting ourselves in the driving seat. So the truth is, is that you and I, all live in a very unique time and are of course all humans for all of time you know whenever they're alive it's been a unique time but but today is particularly different uh, and due to technology due to um the speed of change that technology is creating we live in a very very unique time if you took human history and wrote it into a book into a thousand page book 
for 999 pages, it looks pretty much the same, you know, go out, hunt, gather, stay safe from tribes. So for, for most of our existence on this planet, we were hunter gatherers. And then on the last page is really modern civilization as we know it. You know, the last 10,000 years is, is actually only the last page of that, of our entire time here. So we figured out agriculture, um, farming, and then that led to civilization as we know. Uh, so that's only the last page, but then it's the last sentence of the last page of this entire document of human history that explains the time that you and I live in now. And this is the introduction of technology, processed foods, the internet, mobile phones, wireless devices, a globally connected world, um, globalization. So it's a completely new time. It's crazy. You know, we've recently we've had the introduction of AI, um, but really within our lifetimes or our grandparents' lifetimes, our parents' lifetimes, we've really had the introduction of the internet, uh, a globalized connected world, wireless devices. All of this is completely new. So you and I live in a time of unprecedented change and that unprecedented change is bringing around new challenges and new opportunities. Now, if we understand that, we can start to firstly understand that, okay, we live in a new time. We probably don't know how to do things right and how to thrive in this environment yet. So that's something we got to figure out. Um, and if we don't understand that, as I've already mentioned, we'll just kind of walk around in life feeling a bit perplexed, especially in our, in our professional lives, at why life is such a struggle and why there's so much pain around us, why there's so much poor mental health, why, why I feel so overwhelmed at work. But if we understand the issue, then we can start to actually see why that is and do something about it. So here's a saying that I really like to live by, and that is that it's the greatest time to be alive if you decide and if you don't decide you're gonna you're gonna face issues and this is really important to consider in your professional life so in your professional life if we went back in time 100 years if you read the road to Wigan Pier by George Orwell life was tough and jobs were not great compared to what they are today people worked in coal mines management positions were, were, were few and far between most of the work was manual repetitive labor and there was mass unemployment. So it's very important to remember that the time in which we live now is the greatest time in human history if we're fortunate enough to live in a, a modern developed society. And if you're in a management or leadership role or you own a business, you, you're smashing it. You're living a better life than most humans have ever even been able to dream of. So we live in this great time, but of course there's new challenges. We've got the internet, we're hyper-connected, we've all got mobile devices in our pocket and things are changing ever, faster than ever before. And in leadership and management and business, this creates new challenges. And it's certainly going to lead to higher levels of burnout because change is good and change is important. But change at, a, at the rate that it's going through now is going to lead to overwhelm if we don't know how to handle it. And also, if you think about it, uh, burnout, a lot of burnout is caused by being constantly connected to work. And, and we'll talk about in a separate episode how actually it's not the overworking that causes burnout. It's our deeper, it's the stress that we create on ourselves from our deep fundamental beliefs, commonly imposter syndrome, that we don't feel like we're doing a good enough job and perfectionism. It's actually that that creates the burnout, this constant message that you're not doing a good enough job. So that leads to you working more and working more and working more, which leads to you getting burnout. That's what actually causes the burnout. It's not It's not the overworking. And, and I'll save that for a separate episode, but that's a, just an important concept to take away from today, that it's not working too much that leads to burnout. And there's proof of this because there's people that work crazy hours and love what they do and don't deal with imposter syndrome and, and don't ever get burnt out. And from my personal experience, I, I uh, served five years in the military and did some crazy hours in Afghanistan. I've worked on deep sea fishing boats and done crazy hours. And those physically demanding jobs never... Um, raise the stress or the the burnout monster worry within me but when i open my own business and all of my own limiting self-beliefs and fears and issues around money and perfectionism when they came out that's when i got burnt out but i'm going to save that for a, a separate episode but what I, what i will say and what I will caveat is that when you're in a management or leadership role or you own a business the risk of burnout goes up because of your personal mental health demons so we'll um we'll come back to that on a separate episode but what you need to think about today is that historically we had protection from overworking because we just didn't have the option 
just like we had protection from eating a crappy diet, we didn't have the option. You know, processed foods were only created really around World War One, so tin foods, and then on mass availability in more recent years. So we never used to have the option to eat crappy foods. So most people had a good diet. We had the foods available to us in limited quantities. We never had the option to overwork as much as we do now because when you went home, you were disconnected from work and disconnected from the digital world. But today, of course, it's very different. Today, we have access to processed foods um, in, in, in unlimited quantities. We've got access to be connected to work 24 hours a day, seven days a week. We've got the opportunity, in fact, not just the opportunity, we're encouraged to live lazy lives now because we sit down a lot. I'm sat down right now talking to you, listening to the, talking to you about this, and I'm sure that you're sat down listening to this. So we live in this new time, and, and the new time in which you and I live is a time of exponential opportunity like humans have never seen before. Our lives, we've, we've never had more opportunity and freedom available to us. And if we went back in time, maybe just 50 years and showed our uh, 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 more recent relatives, the quality of life that we have available to us today, they would be absolutely flabbergasted. They wouldn't believe the quality of life that's been enabled to us. Just remember that just um, just over kind of 80 years ago, um, we've got World War II still going on. We've still got world wars going on and there's still many wars going on around the world now. But uh, for those of us fortunate enough to be born into developed societies, we don't have the worries of those things. But I digress. We have lots of choice, we have lots of freedom, and we have lots of opportunity available to us. And I'll go back to the statement I made a moment ago, and that is it's the greatest time to be alive if you decide. So in your management role or in your leadership role, you can absolutely smash it. You can get incredible results. You can have a hyper-engaged team that work hard for you. You can enjoy amazing health, and you can have incredible work-life balance and fully nourishing enriching relationships with your with your family but that's only going to happen if you decide and if you consciously make it happen if you don't decide to make it happen by default you're going to choose to struggle and this is the challenge that we all face in the modern world and we've got choice available to us and we've got comfort available to us and the allure of comfort is always there and if we don't make choices to live our best lives, to thrive in our management roles, to thrive in our businesses, to thrive in our leadership roles, we're by, de we're by default choosing to struggle. So that's the situation in which we all live. And unfortunately for most people, 97% of the population probably, we go with the flow. We don't make the choice to thrive. We don't make the choice to make an effort. We just do what's required of us. And that will, in the modern world, lead to a place of suffering. So the reason that there's so much struggle, stress, poor mental health around you isn't because that's just the way it is. It's because most of us don't choose to do anything about it. Now, of course, there's things that our employers can do if we're not a business owner. Uh, there's things that the government can do, etc. But we're not going to thrive in our lives by complaining about and demanding other people to improve it for us. And if you're in a management or leadership role, that's a really bad attitude to take. If you're a manager... You're, or a leader or a business owner, the attitude you need to take is things are going to get better because I'm going to make them better, not because I'm going to demand that somebody makes them better for me. So if you're struggling with your health, if you're feeling stressed with your job, if you're feeling overwhelmed, if you're feeling tired or you're struggling to balance things, all of that can be fixed. I promise you that now. You can have incredible health. You can have a really engaged team you can have incredible work-life balance you can have fantastic relationships with your family you can get amazing results at work all of that at the same time you can get all of that together and none, none, none need to be compromised for the other but it's only going to happen if you make the effort to make it happen and if you're going to make the effort to happen and you're willing to make the effort to happen the effort to make it happen i'm here to provide you with the tips the insights and guidance that will help you to do that or point you in the direction of the answers to your challenges there's a really important concept to take a grasp of in the busy modern world and that is that the answers to all of our problems are available to us the answers to all of our challenges are available to us on the internet and in books and in fact it couldn't be any easier to get access to them of course we've got the challenge that there's so much now we've got to filter what we need but health results 
fantastic life and, and, and happiness. These things don't happen by accident. They happen by design and they require effort and they require a conscious choice to make them happen. And if you're willing to make them happen, the answers are there to get you to where you want to be. The difference between the people that do make that a reality and don't is choice. It's not circumstances. It's not the the, the things that have been handed to us in life. It's not, it's not luck, although I'm sure an element of luck comes into our successes. It's choice. If we make the choice to make things happen, um, we can live the best lives that humans have ever lived. You can thrive in your management role. You can thrive in your leadership role. You can thrive in your business. So I'm going to bring episode one to a wrap there because I've already been going on for 20 minutes and I promise to keep these below 30. Here's a couple of top tips to take away from today. Uh, I'm a big fan of Jim Rohn, uh, who's who's now passed away, but some of the some of the things that he shared have have, have stuck with me. I'm also a study a, uh, an arduous student of Buddhism, of spirituality. I've spent a long time living in monasteries in Nepal and Thailand after my time in the military. I've been through burnout myself. I opened a business and, 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 and grew that business year on year for five years, had a team, had a fantastic business, but burnt myself out. So I'm a big student and I've also learned a lot of the lessons of life when it comes to leadership and management through burning my fingers, through getting burnt out, through reaching depression, through um, feeling absolutely exhausted. So some of the top tips that I would share with you from those experience are Number one, and I'll repeat this throughout the podcast series over and over and over again. Number one is be sensibly selfish. Okay, British people especially, we're taught to believe that it's wrong to look after ourselves. It's a low value activity and that in order to be happy and to be successful in life, we have to work hard for companies and, and look after everybody else. It's a poor philosophy for life. Um, yes, you want to work hard. Yes, you want to care for people. But the way that you work hard and care for people is by being the best version of yourself. So... Don't be a martyr. Be sensibly selfish. Work on your mind and try to stop feeling guilty about looking after yourself. Number two, be aware of and avoid getting comfortably uncomfortable. Okay, if you're complaining about life, if you're complaining about your role, if you're complaining about your health, but you're not doing anything about it, which we all do, by the way, myself included, you're getting comfortably uncomfortable. You don't like things the way they are, but it's easier to keep them the way they are and complain about it than it is to do anything about it. Number three, take personal responsibility. In this modern world in which we live in, we're putting more and more emphasis on how things should be made better for people, about how the, the business should provide for us, life, the government should provide more for us. And we're very quick to complain when those things aren't going the way we want them to go to. And the truth is there's always going to be things that a business can do better and they're always going to make mistakes. There's always going to be things the government could do better and they're always going to make mistakes, even more mistakes than businesses. And if we go through our lives just complaining about and trying to change those things whilst not taking responsibility things for ourselves, we're never going to get anywhere. We're just going to go through life moaning. And that's you're not going to hear the stuff you want to hear on this podcast. So take personal responsibility. Um, Focus less energy on what everybody else needs to do and how the world needs to get better to make your life better and focus on what you can do. I promise you, if you do that, life will start getting better instantly. And then top tip number four to take away from today is the meaning of life is to be happy and happiness takes effort. Okay, happiness isn't feeling joyful and not having any stress. Okay, that's not what happiness is. That's what comfort is. And that's what marketing tells us happiness is. But that doesn't lead to a happy place. That leads to a place of feeling unfulfilled and empty inside. I've been there. And I'll talk about this in one of the episodes when I left the military. Uh, I had life very good and I just felt unfulfilled. So the meaning of your life is to be happy. And the way that you'll be happy is by becoming the best version of yourself and using all of your innate strengths and talents that every single human on this planet is born with using those to contribute to others okay that's what makes you truly happy and that takes effort and it's going to take getting past your mental demons it's going to take getting past your imposter syndrome it's going to take getting past all the negative self-talk you've got that's telling you you can't try new things that you can't grow that you can't learn because you're not good enough it's going to take effort to get past those things 
But the alternative is staying comfortable, not doing the things you know you were born to do, not growing, not developing, and staying where you are. And I promise you that place will lead to a much more unhappy place in the long run. But if you can get past those demons and start fulfilling what you're born to fulfill and, and, and unleashing your God-given talents, you will experience a life of more fulfillment and joy than you could imagine. For authenticity, my dog is now barking. I think he's given me a tip to um, stop going on on these tips. So I'm going to leave it there. But I hope that's been helpful to you on episode number one. Really, the focus here has been to prep your mind and to give you an overview of what the podcast is about. I'll be bringing episodes to you on a weekly basis. So keep your eyes peeled for the episode next week. Please do interact. Please give us a like. Please follow to help us grow the podcast. And I look forward to continuing this journey with you. Thanks for joining me on episode one.